before I head off to the gym, I want to leave you guys with the number one glute building exercise ever, hands down. Hey guys, it's Sasha with Rice and Raw, and today I want to share with you the number one glute builder, hands down, most important exercise to do if you want to build your buns, your glutes, your booty. Stay tuned, but first I need to get ready to go to the gym and I have to make my bed because I told myself I would make my bed every day. I'm trying to get better, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to like be more regimented, especially like owning a like such a big house. It's like I can't keep up with the cleaning, I need to vacuum every day because I have three cats and one that sheds like crazy, I shed like crazy. Um, and I just have tons of chores all the time so I need to get better with just doing my chores Hopefully at the beginning of the morning, but today didn't happen. It's like five o'clock right now, and I'm making my bed. Still gonna make my bed. So it wasn't so hard. Now, a nice bed to come home to. Right now I need to pick out my outfit for the gym. Yes, I am lucky enough to have a walk-in closet. That was a big point, um, it's the only point for me on this house for sure. It's like, this, it's a it's a room you can live in. Like this is probably the size of a room like if I lived in New York City, you know? And paid like $2,000 a month for. Which is why I live in Connecticut. Okay, gym. Outfit. Also, picking out my workout outfit, if I'm not doing a leg day, then I'll tend to go for workout pants that are not squat proof so I can get aware in of those. Um, I have some really cute ones that I love, I just don't want to squat in them. So, uh, But today I'm going to be doing leg day. So I'm going to be doing squats today, I think. And then also, of course, the number one exercise to grow your glutes. I'll be finishing off with that. And I will tell you guys in just a second. You guys are probably already know what this is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you through that exercise, give you some tips because a lot of people do it wrong. And they overextend and they hurt their lower back. So stay tuned for that. So I really want like a burgundy sports bra to go with this gym, gym shark set, like this ombre. I feel like a burgundy sports bra would be so cute. So I'm on the lookout for a sports bra that's around this color. If anyone knows of a good one, leave it in the comments below. Thank you ahead of time. And yes, that is my clothing pile in the corner of my room. It's normal. <laughs> I try to keep on top of it, but Sorry, it's my pants. It ends up just getting all crazy. I gotta get better at it. I feel like I want to get a hamper that is just for clothes that I don't want to put away yet. <laughs> but then I feel like I'm just gonna be like giving myself that reason to not put my clothes away instead of you know every single day I look at it on the floor and I just feel like crap about myself. Like I should really be a grown up by now and just put my clothes away. Oh my god. I need to get, I'm trying to help her get over her fear of being picked up. Like she just freaks out every time you pick her up. Like she lets you do it, but she just doesn't love it. So I'm trying to do little pickups and then put downs. So she gets used to it. I don't know, it works for the other cats. Before I head off to the gym, I want to leave you guys with the number one glute building exercise ever, hands down. Now first, I do want to mention that compound movements such as squats and deadlifts are so imperative to include in your workouts if you want to grow bigger glutes, if you want to have an overall fit physique. 
What I like to do is I like to start my workouts with these compound movements. So I like to warm up like the tiniest bit with cardio, warm up a little bit for the squats or deadlifts. I go as heavy as I can on them, you know, where I don't break my form, where it, it is a challenge to do five to eight reps. <sighs> hey, Knipsy. So after I do either one or the other, either squats or deadlifts, after that I like to do auxiliary glute isolated movements um, where I'm also maybe working on some hamstrings or some quads as well kind of like split leg Bulgarian splits split split Bulgarian split squats <laughs> such as like Bulgarian split squats doing your abductors on the abductor machine um, I've showed that in a few videos before back extensions cable kickbacks so you could do a whole bunch of different variations on that so then at the end of my workout that's when it gets intense again. So I start intense. The middle of my workout is kind of like, okay, you know, like we're keeping up the heart rate, you're keeping up the intensity, but nothing too crazy. You're kind of recovering. And then at the end, you just blast your glutes with this exercise. So the exercise I'm talking about, I'm sure you guys have already kind of like figured it out by now. It is the hip thruster. I know, oh my God. It's so awkward to do, especially when you've got some old men staring at you and you're like, Mind your own business, you guys meet eye contact at like the up, at like the height of your thrust, and you're just like, uh. And they're like, yeah. And it's like, fuck you. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you think. I'm building my glutes. I'm here for me. Not here for you. Leave me alone. You can look, but you gotta do it out of the corner of your eye. It's called peripheral vision. <sighs> and these are the key to building your glutes. Hands down, I've seen a huge change in my glute game since I have included heavy hip thrusters in my workout. See this before and after? Like from October to now. October 2017 to July 2018. So let me show you how to set up these, because that can be a little tough, and how to execute this workout. So there's two ways to kind of set this up. If you're lucky enough to have a Smith machine at your gym that actually lets you go all the way, lets the bar go all the way down to the floor, then you can do this, but I don't, I don't think my gym has one where you can put the weight all the way down. So if you're new to this exercise, you may want to start off a lot lighter than what I do at like 135. So you want to do a weight that will challenge you at around like 8 to 10 reps on this one. And you want to be able to get to the full extension of the lift. You don't want to be like kind of halfway up. You want to be able to, at the top, really squeeze your glutes. So you want a weight that's going to work for you, especially, you know, in the beginning. I do not recommend doing 135. I, I went for like two, over two years doing like 60 pounds on hip thrusters, which I think I should have upped it sooner, but I was too afraid of the whole setup process to do that. So what I did start out with prior is I used to use an easy bar and I would get one of the people call them tampons at the gym, but one of those pads, one of those pads that goes on um, like a, an Olympic bar, you know, to like protect your traps or something when you're squatting. But I essentially just use it for protecting my hips during the hip thrusts. Although the whole setup of using a, an Olympic bar with the free weights is more time consuming, it's so worth it. Essentially what I do is I set it up one by one I take it off the benching rack. I'll just take the bar off and put it on the ground and I'll load on the weights on each side. That takes a little bit of strength. If you're using a bar on a squat rack and say like your gym isn't that busy and you can use that bar, you can load it on the deadlift level and then I guess bring it off like you deadlift but then place it on the ground and kind of like roll it over to where you need it to be. Um, that's also an option. I like to use clamps on the side because the weights kind of tend to move around, especially like if you're rolling it to try to get it to complete dead center on your hips. I tend to roll it instead of like having to pick it up. So I kind of like roll it in a way where it ends up straight on my hips. Because you don't want one side to be heavier than the other. So I have a few rep schemes that I do and I vary uh, depending on the day, depending on what my workout was beforehand. What I will do is um, for 135 pounds, I will do that for two sets of 10, resting a little bit in between. Then I'll get up and kind of walk around. Then I will do two sets of eight at 155 pounds. So it's kind of a, like a lighter day for me. 
it's still extremely challenging, don't get me wrong. Um, but there are other more intense rep schemes that I used to do, um, especially when I was bulking. Sometimes I'll add another two sets on to the end of um, my hip thrusters if I just really feel that energy still in my, and I'm just like ready to go, I'll do that. Also what's really helpful is to have one of those bands, those hip bands, and I will hip thrust without any weight. And yeah, it might be helpful to have maybe like a kettlebell or something to hip thrust with. Um, it feels really weird hip thrusting without any weight, but that gives me some time to really focus on the movements and squeezing my glutes at the top. That's so important. Yes, I look a little ridiculous. Yes, I actually meet eye contact with a bunch of people. It's super weird, but you get over it, you know? Whatever. You're here for you. Remember that. You're not here for anyone else. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to have your back on the bench kind of like right where your shoulder blades end. And as you go down, your chest is going to go down with it. You don't want to hyperextend your back and only lower your hips. I've seen that done incorrectly quite a bit online. So you want to come down completely with your chest as I'm doing here. And then when you drive up there, so there are different ways you can place your feet. You can do them exactly 90 degrees. You can place them a little more inward, a little more outward that will target maybe your hamstrings or quads a little more. I tend to keep it as neutral as possible. I know you can also splay your feet outwards a little bit, maybe like 45 degree angle. Um, I don't tend to do that just because with the weight that I'm doing, I don't want to have any knee or ankle problems. For this one, I really like and suggest to keep it as neutral as possible, especially if you're doing like heavier weights. You can experiment a little bit once you get comfortable with the form of this and figure out what you prefer, but I prefer to keep it, as I said, as neutral as possible. Also something I've noticed a lot, a lot, a lot of people do online is when they are coming up from the hip thrust, their neck, they're staring at the ceiling. So the issue that can come along with having just staring at the ceiling, although that might seem like the right way to do it um, because you want to keep your neck neutral, you'll have a tendency to hyperextend your back and this will cause, and this will cause lower back um, soreness and maybe issues down the line. So after these, after this exercise, you don't want to feel any lower back soreness. And when I first started doing it with a heavier weight, I did feel that soreness. And what I ended up doing was changing up my form and looking straight forward during the entire movement. And that seemed to correct it. And that's also what I've heard from other experienced lifters. So remember when you're doing it, let your chest kind of follow the natural movement of your hip and keep your gaze facing forward. Yes, I do get a double chin when I do this exercise. Not only am I thrusting my hips around the gym, but I'm making a double chin and I don't give a fuck and you shouldn't either. So what I will do is I will alternate between hip thrusting with the weight and then right after, like immediately after, I will do 12 reps of the very slow and controlled hip thrusting with the band, with no weight, and just focusing on squeezing my glutes at the top. And I know it sounds weird, but like I tell myself, okay, this is the reward for, you know, completing your last set, you know, with 135 pounds or 155 pounds or whatever weight you're doing. I tell myself, this is the reward now, because now you can really feel like the muscles you worked and they're killer. They are absolutely killer. So I will alternate between the two, take rest as I need to, but I do definitely try to do the banded hip thrust right directly after the weighted hip thrust just to like burn it out. You guys definitely give that a try. I know it might feel really weird and awkward for you at the gym, but please give it a try. I think that's all. So I'm going to be off to the gym and that is what I will be doing today. All right, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more vegan, fitness, and healthy lifestyle stuff. I'm trying a new sign off, guys. Like and subscribe. The beach is pet away. Seriously, though. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more vegan, fitness, and healthy lifestyle tips. 
Yeah, tips. But it might come off as tits. It might sound like tits. I, have a, I kind of slur my words sometimes, so I don't really want to go on that one. <laughs> Alright guys, don't forget to like and subscribe for more vegan fitness and healthy lifestyle stuff, and I will see you in the next video.